Crocomom, the theory that should not be anything else but a bunch of people trolling One Piece fans. <laughs> I mean, come on, Crocodile used to be a woman that had a kid with dragon, and that kid is Luffy, the protagonist that got impaled by said crocodile? <laughs> yeah, no, this is totally a thing. What's up, Amanu, and in case you aren't familiar with it yet, here's the pitch you will usually hear from people who support this theory. The idea that Crocodile might be female basically emerged together with the release of the chapter back in 2009. Well, the idea that he might be Luffy's mother seems to be from sometime in 2011. Although the original post that is referenced a lot over the internet does not exist anymore for some reason. Basically, the idea is based on a single interaction during the Impel Down arc. A single line of dialogue between Ivankov, one of the leading members of the Revolutionary Army, and Sir Crocodile, the former warlord that terrorized Alabasta and who was ultimately taken down by Luffy. In this scene here, Ivankov basically blackmails Crocodile into helping them by threatening to reveal his weakness. A secret debt that Crocodile owes to Ivankov for something he was given, as Oda confirms later on on Crocodile's Weaver cards. <laughs> And since Ivankov's most unique power has been specifically shown to be changing people's bodies as far as switching genders, the theory is that Crocodile used to be a woman. Luffy's mom, to be precise, that then was turned into a man by Ivankov. And boy, did I have a very emotional roller coaster like personal journey with this theory. Basically, ever since this theory was first brought to my attention years ago, it hasn't gone away ever since. Ever. And so I practically went through all five stages of grief here. First, denial. When I first heard about this idea, my reaction was basically, <laughs> this isn't real, someone's definitely trolling these poor people. Uh, then, anger. Once I realized that people were taking this seriously and actually talking about whether it was possible or not, I was genuinely pissed that people were debating this seriously, when there were so many other great things to talk about with One Piece. For example, I don't know, how about this 30 minute ecstatic rambling session about where the One Piece is. <clears throat> Stage 3, bargaining. This is when I basically started to try and debate people who believed in this theory and try to explain to them why it was a stupid idea idea and why they were wrong. So, so wrong. I guess I don't have to tell you that those attempts mostly failed. So I uh, entered stage four, depression. That was actually quite recently. I just didn't want to talk about the Crocomom theory anymore at all. I thought there were so much more interesting ideas out there that deserved so much more attention, and so I just tried to push the idea out of my head. However, everything changed a couple of weeks ago, when I started working on my most recent video on Luffy's mom. I had basically found out that mothers, or to be precise, their complete and utter absence from One Piece, plays an incredibly important and central role to the story. And of course, I also wanted to discuss a couple of ideas for who Luffy's mom could possibly be. And uh, do you know that feeling when you turn around and suddenly someone is just standing there? That was exactly what it felt like when the Crocomom theory jumped right at me once I started to work on this, laughing in my face. <laughs> And at that point, I had enough of this. No more hiding, it was time to switch gears completely and go into the offensive. I decided to take this stupid theory, dismantle it to its core and prove to the world once and for all that there was no way no way that Crocodile is Luffy's mom. And so after sleepless nights of vigorous work, I finally, finally managed to find the answer to this mystery that had tormented me for years. Yeah, uh, Crocodile is Luffy's mom. <laughs> So it looks like I've ended up in stage 5 now, acceptance. But allow me to guide you through my thought process here and what I actually found. Because 
As it turns out, there is a lot more evidence in the story to support this theory than I originally could have ever anticipated. I'm really curious and not sure if the person who first came up with this idea had difficulties expressing how good his theory actually was, or if it was just a super stupid idea that then turned out to have a lot more depth to it by sheer accident. To be honest, a lot of the follow-up theories for Kroko Mom have been pretty damn bad. However, I have distilled the best parts of everything I could find and then added in my own thoughts to this as well. And so to begin with, I want to start with the idea that Crocodile is a woman and then move on to him being Luffy's mom, because let's be real, those two are very different levels of crazy that apparently I'm now a part of. Oh, and uh, also, please just ignore my use of pronouns in this video, please. I'll really try my best, but it's probably gonna be a mess. We've already talked about the most fundamental thing to this entire theory. With Ivankov, there is actually a power in One Piece that is able to change genders, which is how the entire theory started in the first place. And the fact that this was all shown so closely to the encounter with Crocodile definitely helps the credibility of these two being connected. Plus, Ivankov keeps calling him Kroko Boy in what I think is a bit of a mocking way. Now, it could just be that Ivankov wants to take away from his manliness, but maybe it's also supposed to put more attention on exactly that aspect of his character. Now, one thing that I think is important to consider is Oda's inspiration for the warlords here. Not only do all of the original Shichibukai have an animal theme, but the group as a whole was inspired by the video game Romancing Saga 2 that was released in Japan back in 1993, which is <laughs> older than I am. Wow. And each of the warlords shares the characteristics with one of the heroes of this game. For example, there's Rock Bouquet, I think is how you pronounce that. The only female of the seven who controls all the men in the jungle villages with her charm. Which then of course became Boa Hancock. Nero, nero, nero. <laughs> Or Bokuon, a puppeteer demon who rules over his own little realm with his own slaves and whose special technique, marionettes, allows him to manipulate all party members. Which of course is the inspiration for Buggy. <laughs> <laughs> The character that is important for us here is called Vagnas, who has enslaved an entire country and wants to find an ancient weapon to control the world. Now, what is really interesting about Vagnas is that while he is male, everything about him looks and feels female. Now, the fastest way to disprove the idea that Crocodile is female would be by looking at his past, clearly showing him to be a guy. And we actually do have two instances of Crocodile before the current timeline. One of them is this sketch made by Oda of all the warlords as children. In case you're wondering, Crocodile is here, a kid who might be either a boy or a girl and resembles Hancock most of all the others. The second time is during Roger's execution. However, Crocodile is only shown from behind here. What we can see is a fur coat, long purple hair, an earring, and a cigar, both in the anime and the manga. And since Oda has already done us the favor and drawn the opposite sex of each of the seven warlords, we can say that this panel of Crocodile from behind would fit with either the male or the female version of him. And as you know, Oda sometimes like to hide and hint at things in the color spreads and cover pages. And as it happens, uh, this is the official cover and title of chapter 938. Now, one thing I know will stand out to you by now, because it definitely did to me, is that everything surrounding Crocodile is weirdly connected to gender ideas. All the code names of his agents are Mr. and Mrs. His name isn't just Desert King Crocodile, no, it's Desert King Sir Crocodile, like Oda going. Oh yeah, uh, in case you haven't realized that this man is really manly, by the way. No, really, he's he's a Sir and a Mr. Zero, Crocoboy. 
I was actually considering calling him Sir Testosterone. That's how manly he is. And then there was the introduction of Mr. Two Bong Clay. One of my favorite characters, by the way. I feel like that dude actually deserves an entire video of his own. And the fact that this man is part of Crocodile's agency is just a pure treasure trove of hints. This man of mans has someone in his strictly gendered organization who plays both the male and female part of his double agent theme. He's Mr. Two, a number, and also Mrs. Bon Clay, two festival holidays in Japan. Not only is Bon Clay the first of the discriminated Okama introduced in the story that Crocodile seems to tolerate and integrate just fine into his plans, but he also has the ability to change faces from man to woman to man, becoming someone completely different every time. <laughs> Now, if this isn't hinting at something, but there's even more to this. Bon Clay as one of the Okama comes from Okama Island, an island that not only gives us a connection between Ivankov and Crocodile, but more importantly between Crocodile and Dragon. Most of the Okama are part of the Revolutionary Army, whose leader is none other than Dragon, Luffy's father. So. All of this so far has mostly served as my argument that Crocodile used to be a woman, which actually has surprisingly much support in large parts of the fandom. However, and I totally understand why, saying that Crocodile was a woman and that Crocodile is Luffy's mother are two very, very different cups of tea. More like a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. And still, I believe that both of these things are true. Here's why. By the way, in case you're enjoying theories like these and want to delve deeper into the endless deep and hopefully fascinating lore of One Piece with me every single week, I'd love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. Now, there are a couple of really big arguments that seem to bury the Crocomom idea fairly quickly, which I know well because I used the very same argument quite a lot back in the day. First, if Crocodile was actually Luffy's mom, why didn't he recognize him? Well, because he hadn't seen Luffy since he was a baby. Okay, but then why didn't Crocodile recognize his last name if he had a kid with Dragon? To which I would say, well, for the same reason no one else knew that Luffy was related to Dragon or that Garp was related to Dragon. Come on. Dragon simply never shared his last name until it was revealed publicly during the war. I mean, look, even Ivankov didn't recognize Luffy's last name. Now, if Luffy were actually Crocodile's child, wouldn't they have some similarities? Well, they do. Both of them have the undying loyalty of their crews, with Das Bone still following Crocodile even after Impel Down, the Zoro to Baroque works Luffy. In a way, Crocodile, just like Moria, had his dreams crushed at some point by Whitebeard, basically giving us a version of Luffy that had given up on his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Which is then accentuated by how he constantly lectures Luffy during their first two encounters, basically like a parent. Plus, we have this mafia special here where Luffy literally looks like Crocodile. And there's also this great comic of Luffy turning into Crocodile, though admittedly I don't think that's canon, I think that's just fan art, but still. So at least now we know that Crocodile did not know that Luffy was Dragon's child and so he has an excuse for impaling and mortally wounding his potential kit. But that doesn't prove anything yet. No, because for that we actually have to look at Marineford and specifically Crocodile's action during Marineford after it was revealed that Luffy was Dragon's son. Because interestingly enough, after his initial attempt to attack Whitebeard, he then actually did a few things that seemed extremely out of character because he went out of his way and endangered himself without really needing to for Luffy's sake. 
And also keep in mind that we never got to actually see his reaction to the Luffy dragon reveal, just as we got no reaction of his to Roger's execution. So here's all the out of character stuff he suddenly started doing. Hmm. Number one, he stopped Ace's execution with the excuse that he didn't want Sengoku to have the pleasure of victory, which if you ask me is a big pile of poop as an argument. Now some people will tell you it's because Luffy inspired him like Luffy does with many others, but what exactly has Luffy done in Marineford he didn't do in Impel Down or even back in Alabasta? Nothing. Which then would imply that Crocodile would have had an entire change of heart for no apparent reason whatsoever and completely off screen, which is not very Oda like if I dare say so. Then he and Dust Bones hold off Mihawk to protect Luffy. So just so you understand, suddenly Crocodile orders his only remaining loyal man to protect the life of the person that ruined his life and his plans and put him in prison? I mean, yeah, he might refrain from killing Luffy because of Ivankov being there, but he surely wouldn't have gone out of his way to send his best man off for him. And then when Crocodile jumps in himself, when Mihawk questions why he protected Luffy, Crocodile's only response is this. Again, why should he suddenly be in a bad mood? Well, maybe because he just found out he once stabbed his own child in the gut and left him to die? But if those weren't weird enough yet, he does the unthinkable and faces off with Akainu, probably the strongest person in the entire war. And so I think that the fact that as Luffy is lying there unconscious and weak with Jimbei slumped over him, Akainu about to deliver the final blow, Crocodile coming out of nowhere to save him and safely transport him to law is, once again, so telling. I mean, this is a man that shouldn't have been on Luffy's side for so many reasons, that has left people behind for being useless or too weak, now seemingly out of nowhere goes full Zoro mode for Luffy, willing to sacrifice himself for him? <laughs> there were plenty, plenty of other characters that could have essentially done the same exact thing, but Oda chose to have Crocodile do it. Who then has this epic shot here as well, standing side by side with all of Whitebeard's commanders, his sworn enemies. Just like a protective mother that would sacrifice anything for her child, because Crocodile now knows that Luffy is his son. Mothers in One Piece play an incredibly important role, and there are also a few other possibilities for who Luffy's mom might be. Make sure to check out that video here if you haven't seen it yet, because it's right here. It is. Da -da 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 -da.